Hannity, you know what I was thinking? If we should say, we should do our own public service announcement and we can film it and everything would be fun. If you have TDS lasting longer than five hours, consult a physician. Trump derangement syndrome, right? If it, Whatever you say is right. I, I didn't hear half of what you said. I don't know no, why my TDS, IMB is you know, t- TDS. <laughs> if you have it longer than five hours, you should see a, you should see a physician. I mean, you, I never understood that commercial with the two tubs, by the way. I love it, but I don't get it. Isn't that the, isn't that defeating the point? The two tubs? Do you know what I'm talking about? You're just totally behind me tonight. I don't think you can even keep up. I can. I, no, it's not that I'm behind you. I can't really hear you. Okay, so Hannity can't hear me. Been, so why are we even talking? We can't hear each other. I'm just going to do. do well, no, you just it. keep talking. I mean, I'm just going to nod my head. Yes, Laura. Yes, right, Ingraham. Hannity. Yes, ma'am. All right, Hannity. Thank you so much. <laughs> have a great show. All right. Good evening. Welcome to Washington. I'm Laura Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle. We have a huge show lined up for you tonight. President Trump's legal team firing back at special counsel Bob Mueller's terms for that presidential interview. Boy, oh boy. Uh, Trump attorney Jay Sekulow, he does join us with exclusive details. And mainstream media breathlessly declaring last night's election results are a total wipeout for the president. But they may very soon regret that one. Plus, the Ninth Circuit's runaway judges are at it again with yet another attempt to dismantle our nation's justice system. We're going to tell you all about it. But first, the left's effort to remake America. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Every once in a while, leftists will slip up and tell us what they really think about America. In a recent interview, New York's new socialist It Girl gripes that older Democrats in Congress aren't doing more to support a new crop of progressive candidates. A lot of these folks were in their political heyday in third way 90s politics. I think that politically, this like upper middle class is probably more moderate. Mm -hmm. Um, But that upper middle class doesn't exist anymore in America. You know, their heyday was in the 90s when, like, you know, kids had, like, Furbies and, like, parents. You had, like, soccer moms with, like, two vans and stuff. Like Furbies and two vans. Yeah. (laughs) That's That's, a dream. That's not America anymore. That's not America anymore. She said, like, seven times in that little... Five times in two sentences, I believe. Something like that. I was trying to... I'm almost running out of fingers. As if she knows all of America from her loft in Queens. And by the way, what does she think? That moms outside of big cities can, what, cart their kids around on those dippy electric scooters or something? Oh, my goodness. Well, all kidding aside, what she seems to be saying, and it's kind of hard to dissect it, is that the new generation of women today are less moderate and, I suppose, closer to her socialist views. And I'm not sure what minivans have to do with it. And by the way... I happen to love my minivan. It rocks. But I've never met a single mother who owned two of them. But Ocasio-Cortez's political magic apparently wasn't working last night because as most of her preferred candidates lost, and most of them by double digits, the real story was that in the heartland, moderate Democrats are looking strong. We'll get to more of that story later on in the show. Nevertheless, she's kind of right in a general sense, because in some parts of the country, it does seem like the America that we know and love doesn't exist anymore. Massive demographic changes have been foisted upon the American people, and they're changes that none of us ever voted for and most of us don't like. From Virginia to California, we see stark examples of how radically, in some ways, the country has changed. Now, much of this is related to both illegal and, in some cases, legal immigration that, of course, progressives love. Remember the old Democrats, maybe some of them that uh, Ocasio-Cortez is referring to, they used to think that borders mattered. But the new activists believe enforcing immigration laws is essentially an ongoing human rights violation. Of course, they want to abolish ICE and so forth. Well, today we were reminded again of why our law has to be enforced, borders strengthened, and the wall built, loopholes closed, and sanctuary city policies ended once and for all. Check out what happened courtesy of Philadelphia's refusal to cooperate with ICE detainers. In May of 2009, Juan Ramon Vasquez, a citizen of Honduras, was deported from the United States. 
Just five years later, in March 2014, ICE officers found out that Vasquez was back in the U.S. and was in custody with the Philadelphia Department of Prisons. Philadelphia, however, refused to comply with an ICE detainer request, so Vasquez was instead released from custody. After his release, Vasquez was rearrested and ultimately convicted for child rape. This is an unspeakable act of evil that should have never occurred and never occurred on American soil. Remember when the current mayor of Philly did this after a judge ruled in favor of his city sanctuary status? A sanctuary city, yeah. A sanctuary city, yeah. Oh my God, what an embarrassment. At this point, I would hope the voters in Philadelphia would see the light and send Mayor James Kenney packing. He's a disgrace. If only such heartbreaking stories, though, were isolated events, they're not. Last weekend in Colorado Springs, a police officer, Sam Duzel, was critically injured. He was shot by an Iraqi refugee allowed into the U.S. under President Obama. Karar Noman al-Kamasi had been ordered deported after a felony trespassing probation violation, only to be released by a judge who cited changes in the law. It was beyond tragic. And for all of you who are buying into the media narrative about the horrors perpetrated on children who are kept temporarily uh, in HHS custody, who've crossed the border, the kids have crossed the border illegally, consider an actual horror. An illegal who crossed uh, the border with a child he claimed was his own, well, that illegal adult turned out to be the child's rapist. Ramon Pedro showed up at a border crossing in Texas last April. He said he was traveling with his daughter and he demanded entry into the U.S. Well, like thousands of other family units, they were processed and then released into the United States. It's called catch and release. Well, late last month at a routine health screening, doctors discovered the girl had been sexually assaulted, assaulted allegedly by him. And it gets worse. It turns out the young girl's mother knew that this coyote was a sexual predator, but sent her daughter with him anyway, because the mother was promised ultimately later on a job. Who are these people? I mean, they're really smart. Mother of the Year Award there. Now, well, who is going to make the argument that this poor, abused, and brutalized girl wouldn't have been safer in U.S. detention than with a rapist. And on my radio show today, I received this call uh, from Travis from Nevada, who told of his own personal loss at the hands, again, of an illegal alien. My brother in April was killed by an illegal alien while he and his son and his girlfriend were out on a, a planned bike ride. His son was nine year, is nine years old. And, uh, oh, my God doing 60 miles an hour on a side street and hit him on his bicycle. The district attorney has said that he, you know, confirmed that he is an illegal. And was there a lot of news coverage? I didn't see any news coverage of this story, and I track all these stories. No, not at all. Not at all. He's right. Uh, it's something the president, by the way, pointed out just a few months ago. The media doesn't talk about the American families permanently separated from their loved ones because Democrat policies release violent criminals into our communities. And if you're under the impression that these illegal crossings are somehow slowing down, well, new data released in the last 24 hours tells a very different story. Border Patrol apprehensions at the southwest border rose more than 70 percent year over year. Agents apprehended 31,303 people in July, up from 18,187 a year ago. And while it's good that they're being apprehended, we should, you know, be a little bit alarmed, don't you think? That they feel like they're entitled to keep coming across the border. And by the way, there were 3,938 unaccompanied children apprehended last month. 
That's up from 2,475 a year ago, with another 9,258 families apprehended. That was up from 3,389 last July. Now, I know those are numbers, but we have to, these are our people, all, a lot of people. It's a lot that this country has to process, and ultimately, most of them are released. And what about those who come here on valid visas? Well, guess what? More than 600,000 of those who came on visas overstayed them in 2017. This is another completely absurd scenario. Everyone is gaming the system. Now, this is a sure way, over time, to remake and reshape America. This is exactly what socialists like Ocasio-Cortez want. Eventually diluting and overwhelming your vote with the votes of others who aren't, uh, let's face it, too big on Adam Smith and the Federalist Papers. And as for those minivan driving women from the 1990s, well, newsflash, Alexandria, most of them are still alive and they vote. And I bet most of them don't like the lawlessness at the border and the crime it brings into our country. I have to believe that most American women are smarter than to fall into the socialism open borders trap. It's clear that we need a reset on the entire issue of immigration, illegal and legal. It's time that the president gives a formal address to the nation, preferably one from the Oval Office. He should lay out his agenda and the cost to the nation of not pursuing it. As he said before, merit-based legal immigration is fantastic, but what we have now is a complete farce, and we're all paying for it. Some, as you saw with those examples, more than others. The president can be so persuasive. So give us the whole truth, Mr. President, the good, the bad, and yes, the uncomfortable. This is a national emergency, and he must demand that Congress act now. There is something slipping away in this country, and it's not about race or ethnicity. It's what was once a common understanding by both parties, that American citizenship is a privilege, and one that at a minimum requires respect for the rule of law and loyalty to our Constitution. And that's the angle.